You know, as I've gotten older, I've tried to become more patient and more tolerant. But this Clip Studio submodel sucks. I ain't getting out of bed today. I keep waking up from the previous night. Okay, so I said I'd get back to you guys if there were any updates. And although I was just going to throw the pricing in the comments of my last video, <laughs> these guys wind up finally responding to all the criticisms with not one, but three different web pages in addition to the first one we showed to try to walk everybody through this absolute disaster of a, of a, of a submodel. So they had, I don't know, a webinar of some sort the other day where basically they came through and they said, uh, you know, they had two people speaking to it. So I took a bunch of screenshots of those slides that they showed and I aggregated it. So I have some way to walk you guys through this absolute disaster. Okay. Which is uh, affectionately titled how to hose your customers. Cause that's exactly what this is. So uh, what's changed here? Uh, a, a lot of nothing and some I guess compromise to really soften the blow of this. And this is in the way of if you purchased it before January 1, 2022, or you purchased it after 2022, there's some uh, compromise here. So after uh, January 1, you'll be able to upgrade to 2.0 for free. Uh, just keep in mind that version 2.0 upgrade and what that actually means, we'll talk about it. Version 1 will continue to be supported with stability updates past the release of version 3.0. Now this is good. If you don't care about any of this stuff, any of the sub stuff, new features or whatever, and you just want to use 1.x until your, you know, your device dies, that means that anything where the OS may screw it up or some kind of Windows or, you know, Mac OS update screws up, they're going to fix it. So you'll be able to still run it. Beyond 3.0, we don't know what that is yet. Uh, there'll be a dis discounted upgrade price for 2.0 for current owners of version 1.0. Uh, one-time purses. That's that's most people. We will start a free testing program for students and so whatever. I don't know. New languages. That's great. Uh, if you're a person who fits into this category, well, that's great for you. And then just to keep it impartial here, somewhat to agree, uh, you know, we have to be fair. So I want to cover very quickly some of the new features they announce for those of you who are not all old and salty like me and who just want to know, look, what, what's in this version 2.0? So we'll skip around a little bit. I'm not going to, you know, do this whole thing, but basically adjustable 3D head models, you know, which is cool. If you're into that, if you use this feature, awesome. You know, it's kind of like poser to me, but you'll be able to do this kind of stuff. It's actually pretty neat, but I, I just don't use it. This looks pretty neat. You could use, I guess, videos of hand gestures and they map right to your 3D model. I think that could be good for reference, or, you know, as well. But, you know, personally, there's apps that do this at least for reference, so I'm not too interested in this myself, but have to represent it, right? This is a good one. We've been asking for this forever. Uh, improvement to the text tool, wrapping, etc. I think that's a good update. Although I could argue it's a quality of life. Uh, these alignment things and things like this for images and stuff like that, I think that's cool if you do, you know, web stuff and, and, and different things. This last one, at first I thought it was really cool. It's a simulated shading thing, almost like the automated color thing. Um, I'm going to pause it here though. You could see it's not really accurate. So I think if you're a beginner and, or you like, maybe you could add this into your workflow to make it quicker where you get an idea where the lighting would hit. But I kind of think like if you had the lighting over here, you'd kind of have a baseline idea where that shading goes. So for me, I, this feature is kind of gimmicky, but you know, maybe kind of cool, uh, for webtoons, there's different paneling features. Uh, you know, I'll let you pause on here. And if you do that kind of work, I think this is pretty cool that they're improving that and more realistic blending brushes, uh, which is good if you're a painter. So, and that's really sort of it on that front. There's a couple other things they have on a different slide such as background saving. I don't think this belongs in a feature update. I think they should have stability updates and they should have feature updates, but you need quality of life updates, which means like, it's just common sense. You know, you shouldn't have to pay for background saving. Spin blur filter, cool. Uh, filters for lens distortion and panoramas, fisheye. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, liquify on multiple layers. Again, I think that's a quality of life update. You shouldn't have to pay for that, uh, but cool. You know, that's, that's actually really cool. So the meat of this is, uh, which we mentioned, when are you going to get this 2.0 perpetual license? Well, that's in March. And then if you fit into this category, keep your eye on this, get six months free of update pass, because this isn't written well, but it helps 
it helps figure out where they're going so you can make an informed decision. The future, the release schedule for 2.0 and onward. See, here's where it starts to sort of reveal itself. 2.0 will be released in 2023. 3.0 is going to be 2024. This is when I have principal disagreements with these companies that start to make, call things new versions when it's just an annual submodel. Like Photoshop, when they call it 2021 or Photoshop 2022. Yeah, there are a couple new features, but is it, is it world changing where it's like a whole new version? You know, like, no, not really. It's just a way to get you to pay. My problem with these guys, version 1.3.0 will be available uh, for a one-time purchase as well. Just in terms of compatibility, uh, what will file compatibility be? Uh, there's no going to be any issues. We'll be able to use assets and cloud services. Yeah, of course you will. But this is where it gets kind of sticky. Will the discounted price for version 1.x owners remain forever? You'll be able to purchase a discounted upgrade while version 2.0 is all sale. That is on sale. Sorry. Uh, so there's a window there, right, where it's going to be on sale, and then that's when you're going to be able to get a discounted price. So if you don't jump in on March, you guys are going to miss out. Uh, next, will there be a one-time discounted upgrade price from one to three? Uh, yeah, no. So let me tell you the, the, the crux of this problem, because a lot of you guys might not care. But if you're on 1.x or you get your, you know, you, you go to 2.0, right? You do it. But then um, you decide, ah, you know what? Uh, I'm going to do the update pass. I like a couple of these features, whatever. But your update pass, you just said, I don't want to be bothered with this anymore. I'm going to just let it run. And as we see, it's going to be an annual model. So you get to 2025 and it's version, what would that be, 5 by that point? Uh, and you say, you know what? I, I don't know. I, I just, whatever. You know, bread's $45 for a loaf. I can't, I can't afford this right now. So you decide to stop paying. The problem is you're going to go back now to that version that you paid for, but then you can't get to, like, you'll be all the way back to version 2, for example. And now you can't get back to version 4 or for version 5 unless you pay through all the other versions. Why is this designed this way? Because they're pushing you to a sub. They, this really isn't perpetual at all. The only perpetual part of it is whenever you stop paying, if you paid them for a perpetual license, you can still keep using it. But ultimately, it's a submodel. Do I need the perpetual license and the update pass for 2.0? Uh, no, you don't. So right now I'm on 1.x like everybody else. If I just choose the way to go the way of the update pass, they're going to, you know, fly me through all the other versions and all the other feature updates until I stop paying, which is a sub. This, you said that the people who purchase version one, read this carefully. Does that include version one upgrade purchases? Yes, it will. That's not version two. How do we know that? Because in the left column here, new users, it says you'll get a 2.0 perpetual license for free plus six months of the update pass. So this guy has nothing to do with 2.1 and future feature updates. It's all the stuff you had before. So it, it doesn't read well. This is a bad slide. They should probably have taken this out. We just talked about the left side of this, right? Let's go to all the, the other side, which is the pure sub, that single device thing. There really isn't any kind of uh, interpretation here. You pay per month. When you stop paying, you can't use the product. It's this middle tree where most of us sit. Uh, we talked about it already. To the left side, did you buy it in 2022? They're going to give you the 2.0 perpetual license for free. Now, I've got a question about that. Remember, we just saw that there's no, at least planned, upgrade from 1.x to 3. So my assumption would be that if they give you 2.0 for free, does that count as paid? Like, is it yours? Do you own it? For example, if I get to that same example of version 5 and I didn't pay the update pass or perpetual, sorry, I paid for the update pass, but not perpetual, do I now have to go pay for 2.0 or I start at 3.0, 4.0 until I get to 5? Like, none of this is clear, like, at all. And the reason is, is because they want you ultimately in either this no column or the right column. So did you buy in 2022? No, I did not. You can choose a discounted one-time upgrade to version 2.0 for free. Why? Why wouldn't you just bring everybody up to 2.0 and be done with it? Like, like that's the way to soften it. If you're trying to push everybody to a sub model, 
Don't make them pay for the same thing twice. Now, I know the comments on the last one were like, oh, they need to make money or, you know, listen, do you realize if they just hit everybody with one perpetual upgrade price for all the people of that clip studio five, how old is it now? Do you have any idea the amount of revenue that is like for all these people to upgrade? Like it's, it's ridiculous. So I can't feel bad for a company that's doing something anti-consumer. Like, I understand they need to make money. There is a thousand different ways to have gone about this. This is a thousand ways on how to not to do this. The update pass, really, when we look at it and we look at this right column, it's the same thing. They just discounted it so that they can call it something different so that they can also charge you perpetual price and have that be okay with people. For example, now they say, well, we're giving you options. You could kind of choose. Uh, you could pay twice for the same thing. But the reality is, over the life of the product, it's probably cheaper just to do the right column. Because you don't have to do with any of this versioning stuff and the perpetual and, and the rest of it. So let's look at that. All right, the top row is single device plan, $8.99 a month or $71.99 a year. So that's a single device. This gets a little screwy. I'm going to go down to, um, and I'm talking EX to here too which I understand some people are going to say, oh, but you know, it's only 25 bucks. I right, man, do it. You know, I'm just giving you the information. So for Windows and Mac OS, again, let's go to EX. The discounted upgrade is $56.99. That's without the update pass. Plus, if you want everything, you're going to pay $28.99. So just do the math on that. Like it's, it's more money than if you just paid the sub. So you could say, well, yeah, but if I stop paying the update model, I can still use 2.0. It's like, yeah, I get that. But do you see what I'm saying? Like this, it, the whole thing is terrible. And in my last video, which some people disagreed, why do you have a pro and an EX anymore in a sub model? Like who does that? Why am I paying extra it from $24.99 a year to $71.99 a year for some more animation features? So I could use uh, multiple pages. Like, why are you doing that to people? Like, get it somewhere in the middle or don't do EX anymore. Do you really have to charge people up for a different version? Tell me who does, does that. Does Photoshop do it? No. Does Camtasia or Filmora or DaVinci Pro, do, do they do any of this? No, they give you the one version for free, which is the other main part of this thing that this idiot company completely missed on. They were really trying to push people to a submodel, especially based on equity, okay? When you can go get credit for free and they just had a great new update, like go check it out 5.1. They could have had where you have a free version that you could take the animation out. You could even take the, the 3D modeling out and the rest of it. It's just the, the base product. And then you have the submodel. One time you pay them extra or you pay a perpetual fee and you don't do this annual upgrade stuff. Like, it's just, you know, oddly enough, it's disappointing to do a video like this. Like, so some people are going to ask me, what are you going to do? I, I don't know what I'm going to do. It Look, it's a terrible position to put your consumers in. But I, I thought this was too much to just go throw in a description and, you know, like, well, what do you think about this? What does this really mean? Ultimately, if you're going to stay with Clip Studio Paint and you're going to want any new features, you're going to have to pay up. You know, that's just the way it is. Even in the uh, perpetual model, you're going to have to pay something annually. So for the people who just think, I don't need those features, I'll just wait. Yeah, I mean, you're only getting like 12 months out of it. So the, the value of all of this has gone down. Like I said in my last video, it's the Netflix model. Once they have you, they have you. And once they have a subset of people that actually do go forward and pay, that's like the first bucket. So when they test this stuff and roll it out, those people who pay up initially, that's essentially their, their now customer base. They don't care about anybody who's not paying. They care about who pays. So when they go to adjust pricing and they go to say, how much can we push this before people freak out? I mean, look how they responded to this. They didn't really roll anything back. They just basically said, ah, you know, we'll make it a little cheaper. They had never announced the prices to begin with. So they had a lot of flexibility. Anybody who thinks by 2024 or whatever, that somehow this company is not gonna make this even worse in terms of pricing, you're kidding yourself. Anyway, that's my informative meltdown for today. If you wanna check out that first video I did, it'll be linked right over here.